questions for Coach Moore? Everybody talks about their offense, but obviously defense looks improved from what we've seen out of Oklahoma the last couple of years. What yeah, you? I'd say very much improved. I watched a couple of games from last year, watching this year. Um, they, they, they're, they're playing really hard. The scheme that they have is, you know, very similar to what Vic does with all the movement and slants and, uh, and uh, you know, guys moving around a lot, and, and they got really good players. Uh, the uh, number 90, the uh, Gallimore kid, has changed his body. They've done a good job. He plays uh, really hard. He's, he's going to be a tough block up front. He's going to be a, a guy that's going to, you know, going to get a, real, a chance to be drafted early. So it's going to be a challenge for us. But defensively, they're, they're playing really hard right now, and they're uh, – and they're they're really fast, and uh, you know they they do some really good things on defense. So they've definitely gotten better. Matt, how does a team get nine sacks in one game? Ooh, uh, I like the way you said the way they get them, and not so I don't give them up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, they just uh, you know they they just play really hard, you know. And like I said, they move a lot. They do a lot of picks, uh, a lot of twists up front, uh, and they they got really good ball get off. They do a good job using their personnel. Uh, using their linebackers to come off the edge as speed rushers. Uh, and it's just they create chaos. You know, that's what they do is they create chaos because everybody tries to game plan them to, to block, you know, try to get two two hats on some of their D linemen. And when you do that, you create some confusion up front, and then that's when things like that happen. And, you know, they get ahead. You know, the big thing is they get ahead on offense, and then they cause you to have to throw the ball to try to have a chance to win. And that's when you end up with all those sacks when you're, you know, you're in a, a passing situation every down and they know it and they can come after you. That's what, that's what happens in those kind of games when you give up that many sacks. Matt, where are things going wrong for you guys in the run game? It seems like every week it's a bit of a struggle to kind of get that going. And is it any particular it's, one it's, thing? Well, no, it's, 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 a, it's really a several things. It's, it's whether, you know, whether we do something incorrect up front, get on the wrong hat, or whether the tight end or fullback doesn't fit the right thing, or maybe the running back makes the wrong read. You can't really just put it on. You go back and watch the film. We had 25 runs, and, and uh, five of those runs were, were negative run plays. And all five of those, uh, you know, two of them up front was, was us. One of them was a tight end. And then two of them were the running backs where they made the wrong read. And, and that's, you know, those, those are the things. That's, you know, you got different points. People, you know, like we said last week, not – from a discipline standpoint, not doing the right thing every single time. And we're, we're not talented enough right now to overcome that kind of stuff, you know. And then, and then you get behind and you start trying to throw the ball more and not, not run the ball as much as you should. Uh, so there's a little bit of that too. Where does inexperience play a role in those problems? Oh, no doubt. I mean, we, you know, Bryson Mays, I mean, he battled. Uh, we knew going into the week it was going to be a tough, tough sledding for him versus the nose guard, and the nose guard was really good. And, and uh, you know he struggled. He had some plays, and it's hard to run the ball in the middle. You know when when you're when you don't when you can't handle the nose guard. So uh, you know we're gonna have the same problem this week. We gotta figure out a way to to get him help and and uh, you know be able to handle uh, the number ninety in there. So so it's that's kind of where it goes. Too, is you gotta you know you gotta figure out where you're gonna put the ball when they know you're running it outside. You know all of a sudden they start setting edges on you, and anytime you're trying to run the ball outside and you get tackled for loss, you know it's a four yard loss, and you you know you get behind the chains and you don't have the the personnel right now to overcome that. You know, you don't have that guy that's a racer. That, you know, you can, you can throw it to him and get your eight yards and get back on track. So, you know, we just got to continue to be, you know, it'll pay off in the long run because we do have to be very precise right now in everything we do. We can't make those mistakes. So we just got to keep coaching them to, you know, to not make those mistakes. So you just kind of help them along until they turn the corner? Yes, that's what you got to do. You got until, until we get – Big enough and strong enough up front to where we can handle people one on one and, and you know be more consistent in the run game where we're getting four yards every time we run the ball and not just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, you mentioned it, it, Kentucky. He dealt with this similar situation with freshmen. Have you had an instance where that's been the same? Was that awesome? yeah, no doubt. When I went to Troy, I had a, you know my 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 center was a defensive lineman that we moved to offensive line and he was a prep school kid and. You know, they could end up being all conference, you know, three years in a row. But the first two years, it was it was bad. You know, it was it was tough. You know, watching him grow into that. And right now, I got a couple guys that are that are working on that. That are having to grow into into that role. And that's where Bryson is right now. He, he works his butt off. He studies hard. You know, he's in the weight room every day. But he's just hadn't physically matured into a Big 12 center that he has to be right now. Neil, you know, how do you explain Kennedy McCoy not reaching the level that it looked like he was going to reach as far as both both pass catching and uh, and running the ball? I, I really can't explain that. I can't. 
you know, I'll put that more on to Coach Brown and let him kind of talk about that a little bit. But I, I really don't have enough of a relationship in that room, uh, you know, to, to speak of, of why or why not he's reaching the potential uh, that, that he, he needs to reach. Speaking of relationships, um, you've known Lincoln uh, for a long time. Just talk about that a little bit. You know, your years at Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, I, when I went out to Texas Tech, that was his first year being a, a – uh, a full-time coach, you know, he was maybe 23 years old, you know, really young, and and we spent a lot of time together, went on vacation, and I know Lincoln really well. We talk a good bit, and you know, he just he's very articulate. He's very similar to Coach Brown. You know, their 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 personalities are very similar. They're very detail oriented and very driven people, and and uh, you know, we we don't talk as much uh, as we used to since I got here, you know, because it's you know it's just kind of one of those things. But uh, when we talk, we don't talk much about football. But, uh, Wildest dreams? Could you imagine him being the coach at Oklahoma this young in his career? No, I, I did not. You know, I, I didn't see that coming. I knew he was going to be a really, you know, really good coach. He's a really good offensive coach, and uh, he's really surprised me at how well he's handled everything. And he's very mature for his age, you know, in the way he handles everything. So he's really impressed me with the way he handles himself and handles the team. Where'd you guys go on vacation? We went to uh, Jamaica. We, we went to Jamaica and hung out. This. Uh, that's yeah, before he had any children, and, and it was my wife and I, and we, we had a good time. With Kendall's situation still being up in the air, would practice reps change for quarterbacks this week? You did, I think you said 80 20 before. Do you, do you get Jack Allison more? What do you do? Well, you know, it's just going to depend a lot on, on how, we, how he comes out today. He's down there throwing today, so we're, we'll see what happens when he comes out before practice. And we're, we got a plan ready if he can't, and we got a plan ready if he can. One more on Lincoln. What what is it about the Mike Leach system that's created the creative cr coaches that, that have come out of that deal with all of you guys? Kind of. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know. It's it's uh, you know, with Mike, it's it's uh, it's kind of crazy because it's just you start looking at all the people with with uh, you know even going back to like Chris Hatcher at Sanford and you know Hatcher and I played together for Mummy and for Leach and you know there's such a, a big cradle of coaches that. I don't know if it's just the, the love of the game, how he, he always makes it fun. He's always, you know, that's kind of the way he did it. It was, it was always fun and it was never a grind. Uh, you know, I, so I really don't know just the offensive side of the ball. He, was, he had such a, a creative offensive mind with the way he did everything and it just made, made the game fun. Matt, um, your explanation Saturday was that the game plan during the week was kind of specific to Austin and you kind of had to mm -hmm. ditch that a little bit when you put somebody else in this week. would. You have the same, I guess, handcuffs if Austin can't go and you got to put in plan B with Jack or, or Trey or Jack. Yeah, but we'll make sure. I mean, whoever is going to be the starting guy is going to get the reps and they're going to know the game plan and they're going to know the specifics of the formations and the motions and the, uh, you know, burst plays and things like that that we do that they that they need to get reps in. So we're going to, like I said, the decision will be made, uh, you know, pretty soon as far as who, who's going to be able to go. And uh, when Coach Brown, we'll pull out the game plan for that guy and what fit, what he knows best, and what he understands, and what what he can, um, you know, what he can go out there and accomplish. That's that's what we'll work on today. Do you have a sense of of what beating ball has done? I mean, I know you study defenses, right? But it's probably a click of you, the line coaches that respect what each other's done. Oh yeah, he's. Yeah, I went up there I, when we were at. Uh, I guess it was the year before last at Troy. I went there and spent a couple of days and. And talk ball, and just went through schemes and all that stuff. I mean, he does a he does a really good job. He was at Texas Tech before I got there, um, and so he just does. He's a fundamental guy. That's what he teaches, and he does a really good job of fundamentals. and And he recruits really good players. And if you can have a bunch of really good players that are really fundamental, you're, you're going to be pretty good. I think he had what was four of his five guys uh, drafted last year. I mean, that says a lot about how he does things, how he recruits and uh, how he develops players. So they, he's done a really good – I really respect the, the job that he's done up there. How much – those visits always intrigue me because are they really going to show you everything behind the curtain or – and obviously Troy and Oklahoma weren't going to play. Yeah, so. and that, that was, that's not a problem. You know, we were all good enough friends where they, they didn't have a problem with that. I mean, there's no uh, – you know, there's no hiding a bunch of stuff. You know, I don't go – you don't go into signals or cadence or stuff like that that really, you know, you don't want anybody else to know. But as far as plays, and we all run the same plays – um, you know, it's just the way of teaching things is, is huge. That's what I try to learn anywhere I go is, like, how do you teach that? How do you teach these all these multiple things to, to these guys and, may, and get them to understand it and fundamentals and scheme and all that? So that's what I'm always about is how, how do you teach? Blocks type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, guys.